Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Ghost Stories. We're just about to upload another video of Mary Callan, one of my favourite videos back in the last year, 2020. Unfortunately, we can't go out do any live investigations or pre-recordings. They're the guidelines that are set by the government throughout the world, the UK and Ireland, so we must keep indoors until it's safe to do so. So why not upload another video um, from 2020, one of my favourites. So sit back and enjoy it, put your tea on and relax and watch one of my favourite episodes and the story of Mary Callan. See you soon. Enjoy. It's long. Bye bye for now. Right, folks, welcome back to vlog number two in relation to this property here over my shoulder. And it's in relation to Mary Callan, who was murdered back here, here in Farrett, back uh, Farrett, or Farrett, or Kilcurry, or whatever you want to call it. There's different names for different locations, and we're right in the middle. It's only a small uh, village, and it's Farrett, I think, Farrett. Could be Kilcurry, but there's different names for different ages, and they're all so close to each other. Um, but anyway. In relation to this story that I'm going to tell here, I have been here before, I'm going to try and do it as quick as I can, in relation to Mary Callan's murder back in 1927. Here's a picture of Mary Callan now. And uh, before I give a quick story, I'm going to give um, a slide shot of all the photographs in relation to this as um, soon as I finish my story here, and then we'll move on to our next stage. Mary Callan worked for the priest of Father James McKeown here in 1927. So did Gerard Toll. He was working for the priest, Father James McKeown, as well in 1927. Gerard Toll came into the situation. Uh, Father James McKeown took him in under his belt in 1927 as a handyman working for the for the priest. And um, he also lived in this house along with Mary Callan. Um, but they had, Father James McKeown was a strict priest and he wanted everything done to proceed. And um, he had strictly conditions that if they came working for Father James McKeown, they had to be in by 10 o'clock. That was the conditions. Gerard Toll was a bit of a cowboy and a bit of a blackguard in no one around Dundalk, so that's why Father James McKeown took him under his under his tea. But um, there was a lot of unsolved murders in the in that year, and all fingers pointed to this property here in 1927 for for Gerard Toll because nothing ever happened around here, but nobody could prove it that it, that uh, Gerard Toll had it in, in relation to the murders that happened in this location. But two murders did happen, and um, with my investigation, when I looked into it. And all fingers do point to Gerard Toll, but some of the locals around here, some of the old locals back here, do not want to talk about it. They want to be bygones, be bygones. But it's a story that I think should not be forgotten. Gerard Toll worked for the priest here in 1927 as a handyman. But Mary Callan, the, she was the... Um, she was the landlady, what we call her. She was the housemaid, and she kept the house in top tip condition back here in 1927 and also her job was to keep the church in maintenance as well along with her told her funerals and weddings and christenings and etc but mary callan was seen a young mccarter lad up the road here back in the year 1927 and Gerard told didn't like it because he did had a bit of a fling for mary Car uh, for mary callan but what happened is she was out on a date night with with uh, mr mccarter one night and uh, it was lashing rain and they were coming home and Gerard Toll locked them into the shed as they went into it. And he locked them in after the hours of 10 and 11. He let them out in because he knew that she would get in trouble because the priest had strict conditions that she had been home here by 10 o'clock each night. But that's where the trouble started. Um, Gerard Toll was a bit of a blackguard. When you asked the locals of the story, what happened, who was Gerard Toll? They said Gerard Toll used to be climbing up these big high trees at night time. And as you walk down the, the, the dark roads in the, in the winter time, to show him here that he'd be up on top of it and he'd be swinging, he'd be throwing stones and he'd be whistling. That's a kind of a blackguard he was back in them times. But in the year 1927, Mary Callan went missing from this property. A big search party went out looking for her. And uh, it was all kind of hush-hush back then times. And all fingers pointed here. And I think uh, Ger Toll was convicted of Mary Callan's murder back in 1928. But before all that started... Um, before all that started, let me tell you one one thing that I have done when I've done my investigation here. Uh, I think there should have been more investigation in relation in relation to Father James McKeown and Gerard Toll, as Gerard Toll was hanged for the murder of Mary Callan. But when I done my own investigation here in relation to this story, the story goes that 
when um, Mary Callan went missing out of this property in 1927, a big investigation went on. They couldn't find her. But in the, uh, in the year 1928, it all started to un unreal. And this is what happened. A young girl called Mary, uh, not Mary, her, a young girl called um, Bridget McLaren. She was only an eight-year-old girl that lived across from the graveyard from this chapel. Her mother and father sent her out to gather sticks for the fire. That's her there now. That's a picture of the young eight-year-old girl. She went out to gather sticks from the fire. In the papers, it says that she fell into the quarry at 75 foot and she drowned. No, no, you got this wrong, wrong, guys. Because when I did my investigation, I was talking to an old man um, in this locality, and he said to me that his father said to him that the young girl, Bridget McLaren, I might get the surname wrong, but it's Bridget McLaren, the church is even after, named after the child that, that said in the papers that fell into the quarry. But it's wrong. She went out gathering sticks for the fire for her mother and father, and she was she's she supposedly to come back to her parents and says that she's seen Jared Toll pushing a wheelbarrow through the graveyard of the chapel which I'll show you in part C and she's seen him wheeling something and throwing it into the quarry 75 foot deep mothers and fathers said to Jared Toll see you doing it and she said repeated yes he did a number of days later that girl disappeared that girl disappeared and a search party went looking for her so the parents told the guards and the fire brigades the story and they sent the fire brigade out to the quarry to drain it and behold me believe they found the child's body in the bottom of the quarry and they said that she slipped in. No, no. Jared told seen this girl. Jared told seen this girl watching him throwing the body of Mary, Mary, Mary into the quarry and this is how it all started. And... Um, and if you could picture the wee girl and Jared Toll kidnapping her and, tr and killing her and throwing her into the quarry so her, he, that his story would not be unrevealed. And I said, are you sure about this? I thought the girl was found in noise. Says, the man says, no. He says, the girl spotted Gerald Toll um, throwing the body into the quarry and Gerald Toll, a number of days later, uh, kidnapped her and killed her and threw her into the, into the quarry. But when Mary... Um, Mary... <laughs> Uh, his body was discovered um, as well. So let me see. When they found the child of uh, of Bridget, uh, the, uh, when they drained the quarry, there was no other signs of any body of Mary McCann, uh, Mary Mary's body in it. Um, I forget her surname again. But Mary's body was not found in it, but the young child's body was found in it. Questions started to be asked about Jared Toll, but they could not pinpoint. They couldn't say that he did or he did not do it. But uh, Mary, Mc uh, Mary McCardle, uh, Mary McCarroll, I keep forgetting the name now because there's so many names to think about it. But, but, but um, numbers of weeks later, her body did appear up in the water and they sent the fire brigade out in the guards. When they pulled the body in off, the, it was wrapped up in a corn sack and tied up with a shirt. When they pulled the body in, in off the quarry, her body was dis dismembered. Her head was taken from her body, her arms were saturated. She had a brutal death. And then, question says, since the child was right. That the question what happened. So they did an investigation in this property up here. They did search part. They did a search warrant in 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 this house, and they found Mary McCardle's um um McCardle's. Uh, they found her uh, bicycle parts in Gerald Toll's bedroom and they started to question Gerald Toll but Gerald Toll um, says that he did not kill her but um, there was a local man who worked here for the, for, for, the, for the county council and he passed this area up beside this house and then the morning they found Mary McCardle's body and uh, they says that there was some other man beside Gerald Toll before in, they were rooting through the sheds they were very nervous and we know who know who that was that was the priest Father James McKeown but the rest of Gerald Toll and the, the, the convicted Gerald Toll for the murder of, of Mary and uh, he was never convicted of the murder of uh, young uh, Bridget so that's roughly the story now let me take you to the quarry next okay in May 1927 in a small town in County Louth, Mary Callan, the priest's housekeeper, went missing. Her young colleague, Gerard Toll, was the suspect. There was no trace of Mary Callan for over a year, until a body was found in a quarry, located 500 yards from the priest's house. Four years ago, is a long
downtime. Especially in a very small parish, the smallest county in Ireland. This parish is famous for two things. St. Bridget and one of the most grisly murders of the 20th century. Mary Callan was found dead in a bag in Falmore Quarry in May 1923. Over there. Jared Toll was raised an orphan in our ten after being caught stealing from a store in Dundalk. Father James McKeown of Fard gave the young man a second chance after hiring him as a handyman around the parochial house. Jackie and Maury Callan bought the house from the church in 1988. I've been working here in this house down through the years for years and it was no... You were always listening to rumours and listening to different conflicting stories and tales about the place that uh, you'd see a lot of your head and as a youngster I worked here during the time of serving my time at the painting and uh, you hear, you, you, I worked here at night on my own even, I worked at different stages so it was no new coming to here in a way for myself. I never really had a fear and I still don't have a fear. Now I would be scary of the living or not scary of the dead. Toll was renowned for being a prankster and some of the stories about his pranks are still remembered today. He was only 18 years of age. He was a bit of a prankster. He was a terrible thing to be at that time. He was an outsider here in the country. He, he knew a bit more than the other lads around. You know, for instance, my father could tell me, my mother could tell me, they often saw him walking past the, our house there on stilts, which was something completely different, you know. He could do um, jiu-jitsu, as they called it at the time, a sort of a karate now, you know. Who else could do that in the country at the time? When he'd leave the priest sometimes at the station, he'd take the car home. Priest, the priest would have him take the car home. And he, he had a, a collar, a Roman collar in his pocket. And uh, the priest would have a hat in the back of the car. I don't know how the hat would come to be there, right? but apparently there was a hat in the car. Maybe the priest had two hats, I don't know. But uh, if Jerry come, Jerry come uh, driving the car home, have the hat on and the collar on, and sure, the, people be, the, the people in those days, they'd always salute the priest, you know. So they'd be saluting the priest, and the ladies would be bowing and so on. And like they'd, they'd see this big car come and they'd know the car all right and so they'd be, I suppose that maybe before he'd be properly gone by, they'd have realised what, what was going on. Because yeah, they'd be enjoying it and so on. Um, I can now have been too for annoying the priest was a guard to the crows below the rosary. He, 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 he could he could claim trees, no bother, run up, little monkey. And uh, go from one to the other. Well, I don't just don't know about too much of that, but he he he, he moved down from one, or, or the fledglings from from one nest to the other, you know. And the crows are going to mend it. Holy boy, what's wrong with the crows, Jerry? And that no no father. And he's that kind of a guy now. It is common knowledge that Jared Toll and Mary Callan had a frayed relationship. A neighbour recalls what he believes to have been the moment when this petty feud turned sinister. Mary was doing a line with a fellow called Joe McCarr from over the road and a night or two nights before this event they were out walking around and it was raining so when they came back they decided to stand into the garage out of the rain. It wasn't usual for a priest's housekeeper, or any young one indeed at that time, the priest's instructions were she was to be back before 10. And that was the law. And on this particular night, of course, Jerry knew that. And Jerry happened to see them going into the garage. My father told me. So he locked them in the garage. And didn't let them out until 
I don't know what time, but maybe an hour after 10 o'clock, you know. So, my father always felt that this, the next day or the day after, whatever it was, might just have created a bit of a row between Mary, the girl who was murdered, and Jerry. Of course, Mary was much older than him. Almost 12 months after Mary's disappearance, the remains of her body were found in a corn sack tied by the sleeve of a shirt at the bottom of the eerie Falmore quarry. The body was badly decomposed and the limbs and the head were severed completely from the torso. Suspicion fell on Gerard Toll after parts of Mary's bicycle and watch were found in his bedroom. Why would any man have all his Why would any man do such a thing only that there was something terribly wrong with him? Uh, he had, uh, obviously had to be a serial killer. Local rumour has it that Gerard Toll has been accused of committing several murders in the parish around that same time. Eight-year-old Bridget McLernan was taken from that very same quarry just two months before Mary's disappearance. Again, when we pressed my father, who, remember, was living here always, on top of the hill, knew Jerry, knew the priest, knew every, he was next door. There was no other houses on the road. By nature of his work, which was a gang of the county council, he would, he would be out on bicycle up and down the road. He wasn't working in a field, you know. So, the day after the murder, and we were saying to him, well, what, what, what happened, or did you see anything? And, and he said, well, the day after the murder, I was coming up the road past the priest's house. And Jerry was standing out of the back of the sheds, out of sight of the house, with another man. And so we, of course, curiosity completely took over. And who was it? Who was it? And he said, that's all you're hearing. At the very end of his trial, of course, he was asked, had he anything to say? Uh, and he said, well, there are other people who have more to lose than I have. Maybe the truth is hidden in the folklore, you know. Gerard Toll was charged only for the murder of Mary Callan and stood trial in 1928. After the jury's request for a manslaughter verdict had been rejected, Toll was found guilty of murder. For 8am on August 29th, 1928, Gerard Toll was escorted to the execution chamber and without any resistance, Gerard Toll was left then housed. Where it all happened. And I just have to remember her name. It was Mary Cannon. Cannon. And that is the church where Mary Cannon worked for, for J Father James McKeown. So I'm going to do a quick walk around the graveyard. And um, I'm going to show you where it all happened. So Mary Cannon worked here for the priest, Father James McKeown, in the year 1927. So I'm just going to turn around the camera here. So I was actually speaking to a lady in the graveyard there a few minutes ago and I explained the story to her and I explained the situation that happened before and she says sure you're doing no harm she says and she says the priest that, that is uh, looking after this after this church he's a foreign priest and he wouldn't have a clue about the history so what I want to do is I want to show you the graveyard now and see can we see can we find um, see can we find see can we find her grave was um, Bridget, see if we find it. It should be in the old part of the graveyard. So we're just going to see if we find it first. And uh, we show you the, the quarry then, and then we'll move on then. Um, also in this quarry, um, Thomas Keegan, Keegan uh, Drummala, died the 17th of October 1932, and his wife Elizabeth. And John died on the 3rd of July, 1975. Um, John also took his life. You can see it there. No, we should move. Also, th this, there's a story goes as well that um, John Keegan 
1975 uh, was seen parked outside the quarry as well and his keys of his van were found on top of this grave and he jumped into the quarry and he took his own life as well so there's actually two committed suicides not only have we the murder of mary cannon and bridget we have two people who committed suicide as well in that quarry it's drained now so what i'm going to do is going to turn around and see if we find bridget's grave and then we show you what where, where it all happened <laughs> So this is the old part of the grave, so if Bridget was to be buried to be in the old graveyard, that is the man that took, that's the grave of the man that took his own life. Um, if Bridget's grave is going to be, they said it will be on the old side of the graveyard, but um, I don't see it anywhere. But we'll walk through it anyway and show as quick as I can. Um, it wouldn't be on the new one be on the old one so it'd be here somewhere what we'll do a little lap around it and we'll have a quick look around um, the woman says that if it was 1975 it should be on the old side but this is the old side of the graveyard now I just want to see can I find it myself 1920 I have it I found it believe it or not I found it guys you wouldn't believe it you wouldn't believe it, I found it, and, I was, and the last time I was here I couldn't find it, so I did find it. Here we go, I did find it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, I'm delighted I found it. So, I did. so here we go, look at it there, look. There you go, there's Bridget, died in 1927, 8 years of age, and that has, that's her grave. You can see it there. You know, the last time I came here, I could not find her grave. But anyway, that's Bridget's grave, you know. She died in 1928 years of age. And uh, Bridget was the young wee girl who saw Jared Toll thrown the body into the quarry. And her body was found in the quarry in that year as well, in 1927. Her body was found in 1927, but Mary Cannon's body was found in 1928. And uh, that pure, that young girl there, Bridget, uh, seen Gerald Toll throwing that body into the quarry, and he uh, killed this girl as well for just because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was only eight years of age, but Gerald Toll was never convicted of the crime, and it was all hush hush. So Bridget, that's it there. I'm going to try and turn on the spirit box for a second just because I found her. Um, I'm just going to let it load up there for a second. But I'm delighted I found Bridget's uh, grave there now. Um, because we've been here numbers of occasions and we can never find it. And I uh, just want to let the phone. I would just do a quick spirit box in relation to Bridget and see if we get the wee child of the wee girl to come forward. I know the last time we did come here, um, I couldn't find it, but I found it this time. That's definitely it, 8 years of age, 1927. So I'm just going to turn around the camera now and uh, we're going to do a quick spirit box session. Just see can we see can we communicate with Bridget. You know, when you're trying to put something together, that's always the case. You're trying to do it and it doesn't work. So it's loading now. It takes a couple of seconds to load. So it's loading there. You can see the app is loading on the phone. So we're just going to let this app run right far as the quarry and see what we pick up.
So it's on now. I'm just going to try and turn it up, guys. For some reason, that's, it won't work for me. go and see. If the spirit of Bridget is around us, my name is Philip. Oh, it's all right. I mean no harm, Bridget. I'm just trying to tell people your story in relation to your death in 1927 in the quarry beside this graveyard. Is your spirit around us today, Bridget? For some reason, that has stopped as well, guys. For some reason, that has stopped. It did work for a minute. Okay, it's back again. Back again. Let's hope it doesn't cut off this time. But that is the, the grave of Bridget, who was murdered by Jerry Cohen in 1927, in the graveyard here beside us in the quarry. Bridget, is your spirit around us today? My name is Philip. Can you try and come forward and tell me? Did Jared Toll murder you in the year 1927? And again it knocked off, guys. Boxes just play a puck. So we found Bridget's. So we found Bridget's grave, you know. I'm delighted we found it. And that's the wee girl that went out to get her st st uh, sticks to light her fire. I just spotted Jared Toll pushing the body of Mary Cannon through this graveyard and throwing her body into the quarry. So I'm delighted we found our grave anyway. Spirit box is playing puck for a few minutes. And it's doing it again. So I don't know why it's doing it. It only lasts for a couple of seconds and then it knocks off for some reason. So we'll try it again. It just keeps knocking off for some reason. And it shouldn't be doing that. So no thanks. We'll just try it again one more time. Shouldn't be doing that. Bridget, are you here? Can you say hello to Philip? I heard you. I heard you. Did you hear that? You're sending. You're sending. I heard you. He says. Yes. 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 Did your toll murder you, Bridget? Yes. 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 Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The spirit said yes. The spirit said yes to that. You couldn't get a better response than that, could you? No way could you get a better response. That's absolutely a wonderful device. Wonderful. Never got a response like that before. 
For some reason, the the app is just playing punk with me. It is scanning through again. Just let me see if I can hear it. It is scanning through. So we'll try one more time. Yeah, we did hear yes in it. Bridges, can you come forward again for the last time? Bridges, are you still with me? The device is playing puck. Bridges, can you come forward please? One more time, tell me. So the device knocked off again, guys. Don't know why it's knocking off. Um, don't know why the don't know why the device is knocking off me. He used to never do that. But um, just for some reason, when I go near Bridget's grave, it keeps knocking off. And um, I don't know why it's doing it. He used to never do it before. So we're just going to put it on again. So when we went to the grave and we asked Bridget, did Jared told murder you? And the answer we got was yes. I thought that was quite amazing, to be honest, you know. We tried again. And if it knocks off, it knocks off. You have a clue. Have a clue. No, but no, but no, but no. Bridget, are you here with me? Are you still here? So every time I say, are you here, it knocks off again, guys. For some reason, don't know why. Bridges, are you here with me? I can't ring, I can't ring, I can't ring, I can't ring. My name is Philip. I mean no harm to you, Bridges. I'm just doing a story in relation to Jared Toll's murder on Mary Callan and believes that he murdered you as well in 1927. You're eight years of age and you were getting sticks for your mother. Thanks, 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 thanks. You were getting sticks for your mother and father. You mean for, 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 you mean for. So for some reason, that app t today is just knocking off, guys. And we're just going to leave that there and we'll walk away from it. So that's the story, anyway, of Bridget. We found a grave and you see what happened there. So we're just going to walk you down where George Toll was seen, Bridget's seen George Toll walking down with, with the wheelbarrow. And we're going to leave the area then, guys, to a, to a different location. So this is the area where, this is the area here where Gerald Toll, where uh, Bridget has seen Gerald Toll wheeling the wheelbarrow of Mary Callan down here. I'm just going to show you this area. I didn't be sure the quarry then. So this is the area here where Jared Toll was seen by that young girl up here. And that's the quarry guys, and there's photographs of the quarry, what it looked like back at then. You can see it. So let me take you through the quarry next. See you in a few minutes. Right folks, so we've done where the priest, Father James B. Cohen house, we did the house. We're just after doing the graveyard. I showed you the location where Mary Cannon's body was brought through the graveyard and where the young child across the road from over around that direction, Bridget, seen Jared Toll throwing the body into the quarry. We found Bridget's grave. We asked the spirit to come forward. Did Jared Toll murder you? And the answer response we got was amazing, was yes. So now I'm going to show you a bit of the quarry, a quick spirit box session, and then we'll move on to our next location. So, I'm delighted I found Bridget's grave, and I'm delighted that um, we got a response, yes. And let's hope I can put a good video together now in relation to the response. So let me show you the area now, in relation to the quarry. So, this is the quarry here. In its time, there was 75 feet of water here in this quarry, and uh, in different locations. So you can see it here. That is where the quarry was at this time, you can see it, which was like a lake.
and the river, there's a river actually running along in here, but at one stage there was 75 feet of water in here. You see it there? A fair big drop. Down there, you can see it there. So we'll bring you up here in a little bit here, <coughs> and we'll show you. Just show you some of the quarries here. And as we show you the quarry there, take a look there, and there's some photographs going along with it, what the quarry did look like in its time. And you can see Ungar Shikana and the fire brigade pulling the body off Mary Cannon out of the quarry. You can see that there now. Right. So we move over here. And we're just going to show you this quick video here in relation to the quarry. Let's just come over here. So we're just going to bend down right down here. So as you can see there guys, let's, let's, that is the graveyard over there. You can see it. And there used to be a little walkway coming down from this side of the chapel, the church, along here back in 1920. This used to be full of water and there used to be 75 foot of water just here in these holes here. You can see it, look. There was 75 foot of water in here. You can see it. And that is where um, the young child, Bridget, seen Gerald Toll throwing the body off Mary Cannon. And Bridget used to live across the road here back in 1927. And her body was found here. They said that she, the paper says that she, she walked into the quarry and she drowned. And if you put one and one together, she's seen Jerry Toll throwing Mary Cannon's body off a wee bar into the quarry. She went back and told her mother a couple of days later she went missing. And then they found her body in 1927 in the quarry. And 1928 they found Mary Cannon's body here as well. So let's do one spear box session here. And then we'll move on to our next location. Now, when we did an open spear box session back in the graveyard, St. Bridget's grave, it was cut in and out. From work, you from work, you from work. You from Spears, work. my name is Philip. I believe that this, it's like every, it's like every, it's like this is the location where Mary Cannon body was found in 1928 in relation to Jerk Toll. Because she's up, because she's up, because she's up, because she's up, because she's up. Bridget, she was eight years of age. She was pulled out of this quarry also. I believe the church Jerk Toll murdered. Fine. And it's knocking off again. The Jerk Toll murdered you as well. There was also two young men. Hold boat, hold boat, hold boat. Two young men. Too early, too early, too early, too early. There was also two men that committed suicide here as well. In this location. Two young men. Computer, computer, computer. I thought you, I thought you let it hold, let it hold, let it hold. So we just finished it off here now, guys. Where would you like, 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 where
doing the pre-recordings or in any live investigations due to the coronavirus. That's the, the terms and conditions. We're not allowed to be out and about until further notice. That's to all paranormal investigators. We're not supposed to be going anywhere at all. So we'll try and upload another video back from 2020 for next week's video. So don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. Keep safe. And remember, don't have nightmares. Hmm, he's back. See you soon. Slongapo.